Today I'm going to be showing you a very quick way to inject a full BGP table into a lab. So today I'm using CML, but this will work in GNS3, EvenG, etc. All you'll need for this is some type of Linux server, and that Linux server will need connectivity to the internet to be able to download files off the internet. And then it will also need to connect to another router that you're going to run BGP with. So in my case, I've got my Ubuntu server, ENS3 connects to that LAN cloud that you see in CML, and that's how I get internet connectivity. And then ENS4 connects to gig00 of my iOS XR9K, and I'm gonna run BGP with that XR9K. So my Ubuntu server is going to inject all of the BGP routes from the internet, and the XR9K is gonna learn those routes, and then I can play with these routes in my lab. So first, I'm going to assume that you've already configured your interfaces. Um, you have connectivity to the internet, so you should be able to ping 8.8.8.8. And then I'm going to also assume that you've connected your server to your router and configured those IP addresses. So my Ubuntu server is 10.0.0.1, and I configured my XR9K to be 10.0.0.2. So I can ping 10.0.0.2 from the Ubuntu server. So the first thing we're going to do is download this file from RIPE. And while it's downloading, I'll talk through the, uh, the process that we're going to take today. So this command should be in the description, so you don't need to type this off the screen. So this file is a, um, a snapshot in time of the internet that RIPE provides. And RIPE has several different servers around the world that you can download these files from. And it's really handy because now we can just statically download this, uh, all these BGP routes from the internet without having to like actually form a BGP session with some router that has the internet table. And there's kind of that risk that can come about with, you know, now you're peering to something that's in production. If you have a production router that has a full table and all that kind of stuff, well, now you can just do this completely separately in your lab. You can just statically download all of these routes, and now you don't have to worry about actually peering with something that's running on the internet. Um, so the process is that we're going to download this file, and then we're going to install Go BGP, and that's going to be our BGP daemon on this server, and it's going to give us a way to run BGP with the XR9K. And then once BGP is up, we're going to inject all of these routes that we downloaded into BGP, and then we're done. We're just going to take one more step, which is to set the next hop uh, to the server itself so that we don't have all of these internet IPs as the next hops, which the XR9K is going to reject because um, it doesn't know how to reach them. So now that this is done downloading, we're just going to unzip this with the G unzip. So now we can see we've got our unzipped latest BGP view file. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do an apt-get update. And then we're also going to install go BGP daemon. So we're going to run this and let it update and then install go BGP. So while that's downloading, I'm going to show you the config file. That we're going to use for this. Excuse me a second. So the go config file is pretty simple. Um, this is really as simple as it can be. We're going to set the AS to 65001 on the server, the router ID to its IP 10001. And then the neighbor is going to be 65002 at 10002. So now that this is uh, finished downloading, let's create this file. So we're going to create a file called gobgpd.conf. And then I'm going to simply paste uh, these configuration parameters into this file in VI. Then I'll save it. So now we have these two files, the comp file and the latest BGP view that we downloaded from RIPE. 
So the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to run GoBGP and start the daemon, actually start the BGP process. We're going to start peering with the XR9K. And I'm going to run this in the background. So it's using the conf file that we just configured. And I'm just going to output the uh, output that the that GoBGP provides to some file. I'm just going to call it output file. And then this ampersand at the end is going to run this in the background so that we can continue to run commands while GoBGP runs. So now that's running in the background, we've got a job ID for it. And on the XR9K, I'll show you how this is set up. So this is a very simple BGP you know, setup. We've just got 6502 as our ASN. We're peering with 001, 10001 on 65001. And then the route policy is important. So I didn't really want to mess with the route policy in Go BGP. I mean, I'm sure there's a way to do it, but it's just a lot easier to do it with what I'm familiar with in Cisco. So this is simply just going to take every route that comes in and it's going to set the next op to whatever the peer address is. So in this case, it's going to set the next op to 10001. So right now, we should have a BGP session up with 10001, which we do. It's been up. We've got no prefixes received yet. So the next step is, this is the last step of what we have to do to get this to work. We're just going to inject the routes into GoBGP with this command. Uh, this is pointing to that file latest dash B view. And what's nice is that GoBGP gives us the option to limit how many prefixes we're going to inject. So we can do the first 1,000 if we don't want it to wait for too long. So let's go ahead and run the first 1,000. And you'll see that already the command is done running. If we go to the iOS XR router, we've got almost 900 prefixes. If we show IP BGP, we can see the, you know, we started getting the, all of our prefixes from the top of the list, starting at one zero zero zero, and all of the next ups are ten zero zero one because of that policy that we've got inbound. Um, and to be honest, I'm not sure exactly why it's only eight hundred ninety two when we injected the first one thousand. I mean, if any, if you guys know, I'd be interested to hear how that works. Um, but to inject the entire BGP table, you know, that's the whole point of this, right? All we have to remove is that 1,000 where we're limiting how many prefixes we're injecting. And just to give you a sense of how long this takes, I'm going to put time in front of this command. And then the server will tell me once this command is done running how long it took to run. So I'll run this right now. It's going to take a few minutes and I'll pause this and I'll let you guys know uh, how long this took to run. Okay, so this is finished running. We've injected the entire BGP table into GoBGP. You can see that total it took six minutes. And now if we go to our iOS XR 9K, we can see we've got 905,000 prefixes. So yeah, that's how quick it can be to inject a full table into a lab. Um, you know, using GoBGP makes it pretty easy. So I hope this was useful. Thanks.